Welcome to Upon Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to attempt to show you how I shade with floating medium. A couple things to consider before we jump in. I'm not an artist. My only training is experimenting and watching Donna Dewberry videos back when she was on PBS. Also, I film with a low budget video camera, so there is no zoom feature, hence all the close-ups may be a wee blurry. And for time's sake, I will jump ahead during some of the prep work so we can get into the shading. That being said, let's get into it. And here's today's subject. I base coated a 10 inch wood round with Ceramco black acrylic paint. I taped off sections to make some stripes. I paint the stripes with Ceramco charcoal. This gives me a black on black effect because the charcoal is just like a shade lighter than the black. It's like a soft black. I sketched and cut out a cute wee pumpkin character and I'm going to trace them onto the surface. And I'll paint him in white. I'm doing this so that I have a nice clean even canvas for his details, especially since he'll predominantly be orange, which tends to be transparent, and I want my colors to be true to their hue and shade. We're just going to go through this real quick. I painted his face and his hands with Ceramco Pumpkin. His hat band and his shirt got two coats of Americana buttermilk. I gave two coats of Canyon Orange to his suspenders and britches. With Ceram Coat Hippo Gray, I'll paint checks on his pants and I'll fill in his hat. I didn't worry too much about the size and shape of the checks on his pants. He's a whimsical wee dude, so he won't be perfectly symmetrical, I, and I just winged it. I accidentally painted his bow tie with charcoal, so I just finished it up and then repainted it with hippo. I filled in his eyes and nose with black. I outlined his mouth and fill it in with two coats of white. And while I have the white on the go, I give his eyes wee swirls, because that's how I roll. I use Hippo to define his mouth and Rain Gray to define his teeth. I'm alternating stripes of Canyon Orange and Charcoal for his hat band and I'll dip out a charcoal button on his belly. Rain Gray and pumpkin stripes on his sleeves. Now for his eyebrows and lashes which are also black. Let the fun begin. We're going to shade him using full guard floating medium. So this is like a clear gel and I'll prep my brush with the medium getting it a really healthy layer on my brush. Then I'm going to scoop up some Canyon Orange on one corner. Can you see it's just the one corner? The rest of the brush is just a floating medium. So like one third of the brush has the paint and two thirds is the medium. I stroke the brush on my plate to load the paint into the bristles. The paint is still concentrated on the one side of the bristles but it has fanned out a bit. This will give me a gradient to the color. It's darkest at the corner of the brush and it becomes more translucent toward the middle of the brush. I'll add the separations of the pumpkin ribs. The paint corner of my brush will go where I want my 
dark as shadow. I feel like this will definitely be easier for you to see when I use darker colors, but I want you to see the whole process because, you know, I like to add a few layers of color to each project. I'm reloading my brush to pick up more paint and medium. Just going back to the stripe on the plate and work that paint into the bristles again. And then I'm going to shade the other side. I'm hoping you can get a sense of the fade of color from this shot. I'm shading the edge of his face. Again, paint side of the brush to the edge. Darker colors recess. So in this case, it's giving me a rounded look, which adds to that pumpkinness of his pumpkin head. And I'll just stroke around the perimeter of his face, his features and hands with the paint side of the brush to the edge. I keep relating my brush as needed. And you, you can definitely tell when your brush needs to be reloaded. He needs a little shading under his mouth there. And now his hands. I'm using Ceram Coat Pumpkin for the first layer of shading to his hat band and shirt. Again, I start by prepping the brush with the medium and then side loading with the color. So I'm just going to shade the edges of the hat band, keeping the paint side of the brush to the edge. And the same for his shirt. Pretty much anywhere that there's an edge or line, I'll shade, keeping the paint side to that edge or line. So just keep that in mind when we get a little further on. I'm not gonna show you every time I load my brush because it's just eating up a lot of time of the video, but you get the idea. Here I shade the shape of his arm, and then I'm going to go all around all the details on his shirt, his bow tie, his suspenders. I'm just going to shade right alongside them. Okay, now I'm loading my brush, this time with Americana Warm Sunset, and I'm going to shade the orange parts of his suspenders and his pants. Always paint side of the brush to the edge. I'm shading my second layer on his face with Warm Sunset, and I'm following the shading that I already did with the Canyon Orange. So even though I'm following those same lines, I'm really laying that color more beside the first layer than directly over it. It enhances the first color. 
rather than covering it. Now, some people might just want to start with the darker color. I like to build those shades, that's just my thing. But, you know, you experiment and feel it out and see what you like to do. I'm just reinforcing that shading under his features. I shade his teeth with rain gray, always loading my brush the same way. And then I'll go around the edges of his mouth and then I add some shade to his front teeth and the corners of his mouth. I'm picking up some charcoal paint here and this is to shade his hat. I think here is easiest to see how the paint fades from dark to light from the edge to the inside. I think here you can see how the charcoal doesn't cover the orange shading beneath it. It just kind of enhances it, for lack of a better term. So you can still see all the layers of color beneath each other is what I'm getting at. I try to keep the darker layers of shading really feathery, especially if they're going over top of a lighter color like this. I work my brush back and forth to feather out that color. Same thing here up at the top. Okay, right here, see that splotch? I don't like that. So I'll show you how I fix it. I will clean my brush and I'll pick up just floating medium. And I'm going to stroke over that, over that splotch. And I'm just going to feather that color out. See? Cleans it right up. And I'm just keeping this application around his face really soft and feathery. I go very lightly around his features. Now his bow tie, and I'll do all the checks on his pants too. I might jump ahead a little bit there, so we can cut down the time here. But you get the idea. And as I said, each check will get its shading too. I'm adding little crease lines to his tie. And I continue on shading with charcoal, following the layers of shading I've already completed in the other colors.
And we're just finishing up here in the home stretch. Now that the shading is finished, I'll add white highlights. It's the same process to load my brush. I add my highlights anywhere that I think that the light would reflect on him. I don't really hold on to any fast and hard rules. It's more really about what pleases my eye, whether it's right or wrong. If I like it, then that's what I go with. I feel like his mouth is getting lost, so with my liner brush and black, I'll darken the outline around his mouth. I want him to stand out against his background, so with a larger flat brush, I'll shade around him with black. I've cut stencils with my silhouette that say Jolly Halloween. I'm adding the words separately, so what I'm going to do is pounce over the word with Mod Podge to prevent the paint from slipping under the vinyl. Then once the Mod Podge is dry, I'll pounce over it with white paint and I'll give it two coats. When I removed the vinyl, some of the paint on his hat came up. So, I'm not going to worry about it because it'll be covered by the word Halloween. So, I finish reading the letters and I'll add the Halloween stencil. I pounce that with Mod Podge, then a top coat of white before giving it the final coat of Warm Sunset. And then, I'm going to run into a bit of an issue, but I sort it out. When I remove the vinyl, it takes up some more of the paint, and quite frankly, it is jacked up. But I gotta run with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna distress the rest of the piece. I hit it with a sanding block until I like what I see. Fortunately, this piece has a vintage vibe, so distressing it just adds to its whimsy and charm. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. All in all, he's not too bad. I kind of like him. I hope this gave you some insight into how I use floating medium to shade and highlight. I would recommend just experimenting and see what works for you. I've listed all my supplies in the description box below. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.